Preservation Committee of May 30th, it's, uh, slightly after 7 p.m., and I am sitting in for the normal scheme chair, Brian Adams. I guess on the agenda is just the minutes, and then the request for an ex expedited review by Dial Self. Everybody's had a chance to look at the minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Any discussion? Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? So we're now going to move on to the request for an expedited uh, review. Uh, would you like to make a presentation to us? We've received your materials. Is there anything you wanted to add before we begin discussion? Um, I think I'm mostly just curious about what questions um, people might have. Um, some of the information I presented, I think, assumes a certain understanding in the initial request of the, um, the project from its first iteration with the Friends of Franklin and the County Homeless Individuals. So if folks would like a little background, I'd be happy to provide that. Um, I'm not sure everybody was on the committee at that time, so it might be helpful if you were to show, briefly review the application as So I'm Phil Raywood. I'm the Executive Director for Dial Self Youth and Community Services, and um, we're um, currently trying to develop um, a bunch of affordable housing for, supportive affordable housing for youth um, 18 to 24 who are either on entry to housing currently homeless or at risk of becoming homeless. Um, in 2016, uh, Dial Self partnered with um, the Friends of Hampshire County Homeless Individuals to try to um, locate and create a space for this housing. They were trying to create um, eight to 10 units of supported affordable housing for youth in the Northampton area. Um, we originally, um, our goal was to find one property with a single building that would have the capacity to have all eight to 10 units in it. Uh, after about a year uh, and a half, would you say, or so, of looking through the property market, we realized that based on our budget, we were not gonna be able to find a single property in this area within our, our budget that would um, come with the building that would have all those units initially. So we actually got a little creative and we located, we changed our parameters to looking at places that might have um, some of the units available, but where we might be able to build up unit, the additional units. Um, um, after securing the property. So we found uh, the uh, property at 11 Hatfield Street, which had an existing building from 1920s that needed a lot of renovation, um, but it also had um, a lot that with our um, educational exemption, we would be able to actually um, develop into additional um, housing units. So um, the, the Friends um, originally, I believe, had put in an application um, for support uh, to this, the first CPA funds um, in the 2016-2017. Um, funding round, and um, that was for um, acquisition of the, of that property, initial property. Um, and so that was, I think, two hundred seventy-five thousand CBC put toward that project at that time. Um, we acquired the the property um, early twenty seventeen at Eleven Hatfield Street. Um, did a bunch of renovation work to get the building up to code. Um, set it up to be two units of um, or two two bedroom apartments. Um, then, um, with and the goal was with that project that we with, with that property was that we we um, could actually build out an additional four units in program space on the, the open lot that's on the property that's um and the open lot is on um, the Locust Street um, side so it's a, an L shaped lot that goes from uh, Hatfield Street kind of wraps around uh, another property and then there's an empty lot um, that that borders Locust Street so anyway we. Um, gone through a, a process um, of innovation that that uh, existing property we now have um, youth moving into and we're in a process of trying to get the, the new building constructed for the additional um, additional four units and what we uh, came up to um, when we got through the bidding process was that the certainly there was a number of things in the initial pre-development phase that were not um, um, accounted for um, once we got into the nitty gritty things that we couldn't actually cost out until we had site control. So now that we have site control, we've gotten bids out, we have a clear understanding of the, the cost for developing the rest of those units. Um, we're in a, a bit of a time crunch right now in that 
um, we're trying to, to make use of the existing funds we have raised and, and start construction um, this summer. With, uh, our goal is to, to be able to, to have construction start in, in the month of July, um, July to August range. Um, what we're looking to do is enter into a, a guaranteed maximum price contract. Um, we have secured a Jones Witz Architects and a Kiter Builders at this point um, for our development team. And um, we'd like to be able to um, sign that GMP contract with um, Kiter um, and get construction moving. We have enough funds on hand right now to, to carry through probably into maybe October or so. But we, we, we can't commit without having a, the, an, enough funds committed to the project um, and, and then have to stall out in the middle. Um, so if we're not able to get the funds you know, committed to a certain level where you know, we can only have Basel has made the capacity to do a little bit of bridge financing while we're working on the rest of the finance, our, the rest of our financing pro forma. But um, you know, and, and more than 100,000 or so, and we won't be able to. to, to we can't support that, that extra bridge financing. So we're looking to make sure we have um, all but at least 100,000 um, committed fully before we, we sign that contract and get moving. And if we have to wait until next year, we're looking at a, a lot of different issues where we're looking at. Um, First of all, the issue that we're, we're going to have in a whole other year without the additional housing units coming online for the youth we're working with. Um, the program space it won't be available for that time as well to be um, doing prevention work for youth. Um, and then there's the financial pieces as well, which gets into right now the actually the percentages I, I sat down with the, um, the architect and, and the, um, the builder and I did a little bit more research in the last few days. And, they're actually looking at more like potentially an eight percent construction cost increase between this year and next year, given the current market. So if we have to wait to start construction until next year, we're looking at pretty much any of our base costs probably going up almost eight percent. We also have some um, pre-existing funds um, from other sources that have some some statements in there where we need to be starting construction by certain deadlines, and if they don't, they have a recourse to actually pull that those funds back. So we're kind of Looking and a bit of a pickle in terms of the timing right now is that you know we, we want to make sure we don't you know increase the cost of the project and we don't want to lose funds we already have into the project um, and so th those are big, big pieces right there and then certainly just you know, getting those those units up and on and functional and having that that supportive housing um, for for youth eighteen to twenty four who are are in pretty dire straits um, sooner rather than later so that's a I attempt at a quick bring bring up the speed on the project and I'm happy to answer any questions or fill in holes in um, that process. I'm going to turn it over to others, um, but first I'd just like to know how much are you anticipating asking for if you were allowed to come in for an expedited review? Uh, 236000 Has the total project cost changed by that much or, or is that? Portion. That is a portion of the total cost. What's the total project cost? Um, the total project guess, cost is yeah. I guess you'd include acquisition and everything. So, so the yeah, so the total capital. project cost from from start to finish is about uh, is I actually have I have the full application and sources and uses right here if you want to take a look actually. But um, it's uh, one million three hundred twenty five dollars and change um, for the total including cost the, of the project. The acquisition, including acquisition and everything. So yeah, start start to finish, development costs, architectural, construction, contingency. Um, so yeah, so. Um, CPC funds, um, this request would be about 17% of the total, um, and if you were to put the two together, it would be about 38% of the, the total funds. So we're, we've got another 825000 or so um, of other additional um, privately raised, uh, mostly privately raised money for the project. There's a, a little bit of um, community building block grant funding in that project as well. Is it a prevailing wage job? Or? It is not. Would you give me the total cost again, please? Sure. Um, you can do that. You do that. So one million three hundred twenty-five thousand. That's that's round enough. Yeah. Okay. All right. If that's good enough. Four hundred and eighty. Yeah. Sarah, maybe you can tell us. I remember this when this first came in. At that point, there was no site. It was yeah. it was TBD. Everything was TBD. We all. The philosophy, you know, was in line with what we thought. So he said, "Okay." And I seem to remember this L-shaped lot. So did they come? You guys come back and fill us in at some point on something? In, 
There was some updates. I think the uh, Friends of Hampshire County Homeless Individuals, I believe, came back with, with an update just to look. Just to say, right, when the site had been found or something like that. Right. I, 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 I had sent a couple of emails mm -hmm. uh, as major things like that happened. I think the last one was December when we were okay. turning the property over to Dallas Health. Okay. I, right. I'm just trying Okay. Well, there's no question. And just um, you, you said you turned the property over in December of last year. Correct. Okay, so that was when you said you took ownership of it. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. at that point, you were able to go ahead with getting real costs for these improvements that you had in December. Correct. Yeah. We weren't able to put it the project out to, to, to bid and get the full full work of plans from the architects until we had had the tile itself had the site control and could have that process that contractual relationship with uh, the architects and players. So all we're voting on today is whether to hear the next question review. Is that right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> whether it meets these criteria and to produce a timeline. Right? I'm just wondering where we are in our financial progression of things, where we stand in terms of funds that are available to us and when they are available. I was wondering the same thing. I can always turn to Sarah for that. Sure. So right now there isn't any money at all. There will not be any money until after the first of the fiscal year. Um, so local revenue, we're estimating about one million two hundred and eighty seven thousand and our bonding obligations are five hundred and sixty seven thousand with an administrative uh, earmark of sixty five thousand so that leaves about six fifty five for new projects plus whatever state management received which is not anticipated to be very much so what we're expecting for the the, the two rounds, fall of 18 and spring of 19, is 600 and something thousand. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, if we get Minus, based on your projections and, and not including what we might get from the state. That's correct. If the state matches 10%, we'll add about $90,000. So we're talking 725 and change. And is, is there any reserve in the housing? Or sure. you would get signed. There, there, there isn't anything. Yeah, okay. That's okay. And our September round, that no more Right, right. Sarah, and this is, sorry, this is getting to be some of the tangent. I also heard a rumor about the community builders project on Village Hill not getting state funding. I have not heard that. Okay. I don't know the same. So I don't know what that would mean, if anything, for us. Oh, that would get turned back. Yeah. So that would bounce them into the next round. So some likely, of them are, unless some we we approve them for some amount. Mm -hmm. A very small. Put a hundred or something. Anyway, sorry. Well, this is the, money the, money the, money the, money. the money wouldn't come back at this point. They would have an opportunity to go to put in for another application. Sure. Right. Um, I had a couple of questions, and if there were no other, um, first is sort of a statement that, as a, I'm sure you appreciate what what's hard is. We're being asked to consider this um, without knowing what other applications are there, and that precludes us from putting them up against each other. And so, if this is doing expedited reviews, is is, is not uh, the normal course. So, I need to really understand um, a couple of things, but mostly why this could not have gone at least into our, our most recent round, because I think the property, and I'm anticipating you have a good explanation for that, but I, I need to hear it. Um, my understanding is that you, the property was purchased by friends in March of 2017, so that was something like 14 months ago. Um, and so I wouldn't anticipate that you would have been able to get into our uh, fall round, but I'm wondering why this was not clearer for the, in terms of the spring round for funding, this previous round that we just announced it. So, so Donald Self took ownership at the end, that, uh, December 28th, 
uh, 2017, and then had to work out uh, the our schedule with our architect. So we didn't have our bids back from our contractors until April. But um, but since you knew you had a you had a memorandum of understanding, mm -hmm. so I assume the two of you were working together mm -hmm. to move this forward. So I wouldn't have thought that you needed title. That wouldn't have precluded you from advancing things with your. Um, with your our architect had advised us not not to go to bid until we had um, a, a acquired title to the property. So yeah. we were yeah, it's going to bid to come to us. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, even if you did your square foot response that you did here, you would have known that you were short. Nothing, right? At, at six thirty six, if it was if it was just that difference, then then we would have looked to try to cover that additional amount um, through the other sources we're already trying to bring to bear on the project. Um, some of the things that came up in the bidding process um, also included um, stormwater systems that were higher than originally anticipated, additional lighting stuff when we went through um, uh, site plan review, um, additional fencing, additional. Um, there, so there, there were a number of um, additional things that didn't come up until the project actually got, had the bid numbers come back that actually pushed it over the line where we decided we really need to, to, to come and seek additional um, additional funds here. So did you go through uh, any rounds of DE or anything? I mean, it's um, yeah, that, for these things that this, this is actually, actually with us going through um, VE to bring the project from the original bids down by over $150,000. So the, the bid the bids actually the initial construction bids for the baseline came in um, at almost a million dollars by themselves. And this is covering just the new construction. This is just it's new construction changes. and the and the site work. So um, in it's terms not of changes in the existing. The, no, the the one point three million is the total project, including the changes. But the the bids we got back in April from three different contractors were close to a million dollars each on just the new construction and the site work. And so we've actually pared that down by several hundred thousand dollars with them doing some serious VE work, actually. Like for instance, like you're asking for this money for casework because there's not a lot of square footage in the apartments, but you're building these from scratch, just building bigger apartments. I mean, well, the, 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 there's only so much we can build within the space to right, a small lot. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I guess, I guess yeah. what I'm struggling with is yeah. we didn't have, this is all, we approved the initial money based on a hypothetical site. Yeah. Maybe in retrospect, that was maybe a mistake, I don't know, but now it seems, you know, it puts us in a very difficult position and doing a much less rigorous review than we would do for other projects. Uh, and then I'm not saying this to reflect badly. I mean, your mission is for everything. It's just to make sure that, you know, the, this is the most efficient use of public dollars. Certainly, I understand. Um, yeah, and this, really this is a different process judge. for us in terms of this is the, the third property renovation, fourth property renovation we've done to create affordable housing units. Um, it's, it's the first we've done using these funding streams and, and the um, so in the past we've gone, gone through a much different process through um, uh, DHC funds in, in um, both um, uh, in Orange, Greenfield, and Turner's, and so we're this this is definitely a little bit the process side of, of approaching this has been a little bit new for us to navigate. So I, I do apologize for the not maybe not fully understanding that the timing of, of, of some of the the processes here, uh, but I certainly understand the, the where you're at in terms of the position you're at in terms of trying to figure out how, how do you uh, assess this in a faster term and during a period of time where you don't know what other, other applications you might be looking at. Have you talked about phasing it at all? Let's say, say we don't have any money, mm -hmm. we don't, don't give you any money. Uh, have you talked about here's phase one that we could move forward with because of the money we know we have today and then to make it so you don't lose the whole project in the long term? We have started talking with the builders and the architect about that as a possibility. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it still ends up adding a lot of cost to it, the project, um, but it, it is potentially a way for us to do it in stages. And so, yeah, we have talked about um, that, and that that is a potential um, option. So we were just we just started having those conversations about what that might look like and how the, those timelines could could play out and, and what those costs would be. Can I add something? I feel I'm feeling a little. Compelled to say something since my organization was the one who made the original. <laughs> and Rick, our turning point for us was when we got the bids back for the new building. Um, we had, in fact, when we started working with architects and with some of the city departments back last summer about the new building, 
and we were going along with that. Uh, my group was still fundraising, uh, which you know, we felt we were sort of in the final <laughs> stages. Um, and that's one of the reasons that we had always planned on transferring ownership to Dow Self when the first building was ready and when the new building was going to start. Um, so it just seemed a logical time when we were going into the second phase of the whole thing. Um, and then we got the bids back, which was way too late for not only the fall round, but really the spring round. Uh, and it was like, oh, you know, they're, they're way over what we were expecting. So Phil, in particular, has been working really hard since then to, to pair those, those things. We're trying it simultaneously to raise more money and to reduce the cost from that, the, the uh, bids that were several hundred thousand more than we expected, really. Uh, and we're going to do it. But, uh, and so I, I just, I, I need to apologize because I very clearly remember when I was, was hearing before you a couple years ago, saying, we won't be back to you, you know, we, everything's all <laughs> fixed. Mm -hmm. Obviously that's not the case. Um, we're, we're behind our schedule and the costs are going up. So that's why we're back. Is, uh, we're going to get this through somehow or other. Um, but we're certainly hoping that the CPC can, can help again. So Tyler's acting as a CM? So the Correct, yeah. the sub -bids. Correct, so yeah. 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 Let me turn it back to you. So did, yeah, you yeah. Have, did you have, were they the only ones doing cost estimates through design, or did you do, did you have an outside cost estimate? So for, we had, um, JWA, was, uh, the architect firm, was doing some of those cost estimates, and then um, we they had. Or they had a third party do it? Hmm? They were, they were doing it in-house, yeah. 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 Um, I'm an architect, we don't know how to do cost estimates. <laughs> 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 And CMs certainly don't know how to do cost estimates. <laughs> uh, it was my understanding after talking with the DPW and some other city departments that some of the uh, the extra unexpected costs were due to a stormwater system being over designed based on a misunderstanding of the city's stormwater requirements. Yeah, and, that's is, and that so is are those changes reflected? Th those changes are reflected in that budget. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you uh, brought up the initial presentation because part of what's going through my mind is that the, the whole <coughs> project as it was proposed was to find a, as I recall, was to find a, a uh, house in relatively good condition um, which be, could be used um, for, for, for the eight to 10 individuals and would not require much rehabilitation because I was recall being concerned that there wasn't much in there for rehabilitation um, and I had some concern whether the, all of that was realistic I, I guess I'm I, I want to ex express that I would have appreciated unless maybe I've forgotten that you did this um, if when the whole design kind of the whole approach changed and you were looking at you say is a building that needed a lot of rehab plus new construction that that could have been shared um, so that we understood where you were at and what, the, what this change might might mean because we're now in the position of having to put a lot of money two hundred seventy five thousand dollars into this and being presented where we thought that was going to be accomplished the, the project and now we're being told that another 236,000 that's not going to be possible um, and that puts us in a in, in a real bind I think it's not just the timing it's the, uh, the situation that we're presented with so maybe if you could speak to that a little bit I would appreciate it um, yeah I'm, either 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 I read yeah, anything on that <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it's a very legitimate yeah. concern. I, I will say, as I, as I said before, I have sent email updates. I did not come back and appear before the committee, and, and I'm seeing now I probably should have done that because it would have been more direct. Um, so I apologize for that. Yes, it, it, uh, uh, there have been updates, but they weren't clearly good enough. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I think the application might have been in order this project is so uh, is different enough from the project that we approved, which, albeit it was a hypothetical site, and, you know, it was a hypothetical project. In this case. Just to be clear, the new construction was 2,650 square feet, 
$636,000. That's four units? Four units. Four units in four, two, two bedroom apartments? Um, four? It's that, that's um, four enhanced SROs and it's um, also a small program space for um, for providing services to the youth in the, the in all um, eight of the beds in, in the total project and then also to be able to do interface with community youth for um, um, providing additional prevention services. So is the total project eight beds? So the total project is eight beds, yeah. It's four, four enhanced SROs and two two-bedroom units. So um, one of the, the reasons behind that, that the design is actually um, uh, programmatically um, d driven. We have some youth, you know, youth who really you know, are looking for um, the ability to um, have a roommate and have, have the ability to, to create some, do some of those roommate life skills. And we have some youth who are coming in who are, who are absolutely not in a position to have a roommate situation. They really need their own space, um, mental health issues and, and other things like that really dictate uh, kind of an enhanced SRO is a, a, a much better fit for them in terms of their development. So. The the, pro the project um, design actually allows to have a mix of mix of both of those types of units. So that's a studio with a bathroom. So it's yes, it's a so the enhanced SRO is basically a studio with its own bathroom and kitchen. With a kitchen. Yeah. So oh. the kitchen's built into it. Do I have the I got the plans here? If you want to take a look at them. Um, I assume they're in the application. They're in the application. Yeah. So. And the cost estimate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything is yeah. The, and, and and I'm just because I found the original application was also for eight for units for eight youth, right? Mm -hmm. So the very original application was units for eight youth, and now we're going to be looking at an application still trying to get eight youth. Still eight youth, yeah. That's the total. Have you had any discussions with the uh, funders that have the you know, deadline to see whether the likelihood that that could be extended? Uh, we, ha we have talked with them a little bit. There, there, there may be some wiggle room there, um, especially if we, we look at maybe doing something like you said about like a phase construction or something. Um, that they're 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 also a little that they're you know it, it's they haven't you know um, so I think that there is some potential for us to negotiate there. Would be the, the answer to that question. And uh, has there been any quantification of what the additional cost might be if you were to do the stage construction? So we're just starting to work out the stage construction cost estimates and see how, how much of that is would, would, would add on and where that would play out with what contractors and when and what we think we could actually get done. Um, the contractors think they could actually get done reasonably um, with the funds we have on hand and, and, and during what time frame. Um, whether they'd be able to do that and get, get a structure up so that, that would, if it would be sealed for winter or not, so that it would be in a good place to stop, um, and, and what that fund line looks like. So um, so I don't have no, hard numbers for a phase system yet. Is there work to still be done on the existing building? Uh, the existing building is, is, is good to go. So we have folks moving in. Um, I think I just got an email. So you're not putting any more other than maintenance? Right? Other than general maintenance, yeah. We're not planning on putting anything, anything more into it. We a little more into it than we originally intended to. So, we're so, good so, to go. so if I understand it, if I understand this, it seems like with a phased construction, you could actually come back during regular cycle to make a request to us. Potentially, if we did that as a phase, we might be able to come back under regular cycle. Um, it would still add additional costs, um, and, and uh, again, del delay the timeline for you being able to move in. Um, but it's a possibility. And um, back to you, mm -hmm. the potential, I, it sounds like you've done uh, a tremendous amount of fundraising. Mm -hmm. uh, so don't shoot me for asking this. Um, the, the problem with the phase construction is you've got half the building that's not usable. So you got to get the money there from somewhere. So um, what do you think the potential is for additional fundraising? I, to complete the we probably both have things to say. Yeah, yeah. We're actually we're splitting the fundraising. Now. Okay. We're no okay. longer, in fact, Dow Self is really the prime the point for the yeah, yeah. We are still doing, we're done. We're still doing <laughs> some fundraising. One of the iffy things Phil was talking about is a grant that we made with an Eastern Mass uh, Foundation, which actually doesn't gift the grant until you start construction. So, and we were at our deadline for that one. So after it.
talk with the president of that. They decided they would give it to us anyway conditionally. But he's, doing, he's saying, you know, keep me completely updated on all this because something needs to happen soon. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't bring up the issue of stage with that, so I don't know if that was satisfied mm -hmm. we go that way. Um, but uh, so we're both still, uh, we're looking at grants again from different kinds of private foundations. I really don't want to go back to a community drive if we can avoid it because the bulk of what we've raised has come from the community, really, the odd and the off and off foundations. And so we've got a huge response in the last two years um, and some very large donors. And I don't want to go back and ask them for more money at this point. Um, but I will if I have to. And that, yeah, and that, yeah, and that, and that self three brief is, is reaching out to a number of private foundations that have not come into the project through the friends yet that we have relationships with that work. So we're trying to um, tie into pre existing relationships we have with other different private foundation sources, um, as well as some of our major donors who haven't been asked on this project yet. So, um, so I, I feel like you know the the amount that we have in kind of in our, our general pro forma that we're trying to still bring in in addition to the, the ask um, we're trying to put forward here to the, you know, for the CPC funds, I think that that's, that's a reasonable goal, especially with, with, between Rick, you know, and his fundraising and Val Self and our fundraising. I think that it's, a, it's an attainable goal given what we've achieved so far and, and the, that we haven't necessarily um, gone through all of our collective um, possibilities yet in terms of uh, foundations we, we've worked with and, and some of the, those donors. Um, it's certainly, you know, you know, the, that, that number, um, you know, add another 136,000 to that and that becomes a much harder number over the, the time frame we're looking at, but. So there's still an additional amount we need to raise, is that what I'm understanding? Uh, correct, yes. 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 Um, the, this how much, not, the, the total amount. How much additional? About 130,000 or so, I think, yeah. In addition to what you're requesting? Correct, yeah. How did you determine that? Um, how, did, how did you determine how much to ask us for then? Um, we determined based on what we thought we could actually raise um, with, with our existing combined fundraising. So with, in terms of foundations, um, major gift asks, and additional event fundraisers. So, I'm, I'm actually not so concerned that we'll be able to raise the money as I am about the timing. And of course I have most of the back fundraising. So I have all these foundations that are wanting to hear that this thing's finished. And, <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, it's already half a year late. Uh, so I, I really would, I'm very anxious to, to keep the momentum going. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Yes. Um, <clears throat> this is actually for Sarah. Um, if we wanted to do something, um, <clears throat> what would be the earliest the money would be realistically available? Uh, we could not get a council recommendation before the first of the fiscal year on July 1st. But the money would be, assuming that they were willing to go ahead with it at that point, the money would be available like the next day kind of thing, or? Uh, we need the commitment, not the actual We need the commitment, right? yeah. Our, 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 the, the cash flow side of it for us would be, you know, we need to now the cash we wouldn't need until uh, probably about mid October, early November. So, how does July 1st work for you? Hmm? How does July 1st work for you? July 1st would be great. Okay. Yeah, the money would, if it were approved by council in July, I don't know when they'd be. No, that's the summer schedule. Yeah. It would be available in August. That's yeah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but they likely wouldn't have approved till the end of July. Would they have to look at it twice? Uh, we could request two readings. Their council is an obligation. So how does August 1st work for you? <laughs> <laughs> um, it means a little bit of a, uh, potentially a little bit of a delay. Um, and, and it would mean we would continue certainly to be working on, on looking at what, what a phased construction um, setup look like. And we might try to implement a partial one just, just to make sure we can start some basic things like um, site work, demo, things like that. And we've, we've already got um, like abatement scheduled for um, June 15th. We're doing that outside of the contracts, um, the general contract, um, so that that's done and out of the way with so as soon as we're ready oh, to go. Building. Um, there's two garage, there's a garage on site that needs to come down that has some asbestos on it. It's a small, like it's, a, it's like an $1,800 abatement project that Abide is taking care of for us on uh, June 15th, so. Yeah. Sorry. 
any chance, sir, I don't know who would answer this question. Is there any chance that city council would, even if we recommend it to go forward? This is a very hot topic in city council right now. Uh, they've been going back and forth on some of these related issues. Is there any chance that they would uh, approve something that we recommend? Uh, they've never done it to date. Yeah. I mean, they could. Have, have we seen other expedited, or have we sent other expedited recommendations over to City Council? Then? Yes, I think there have only been two. Uh, one was the bean farm acquisition, oh, yeah. so there was all the support for that. And another, the most recent one was uh, extra funding for the Connecticut River Green with. Are there any other questions that people have? When do you think your phased construction estimate might be completed. Um, I'd have to consult with um, our, our builder to get a really solid answer on that. He's been able to bring some mm -hmm. numbers together pretty quick. Um, uh, maybe a couple weeks um, to just work everything out with his subcontractors as well. But I would highly recommend that mm -hmm. even if you don't have a hard number for phasing, yeah. put something in this application. Okay. We need to have something. We need to have something. Sure. Order of magnitude. I can make that adjustment. Yeah. And then um, I wasn't on the committee in 2016-17 when we got your 275K. Do you rec recall how much you requested at that time? Yeah. That was the full yeah, amount. That was the full amount. Yeah. Yeah. It's 275 of $750,000. Yeah. And that got, that got a building, that got a, an existing building that was renovated and you were able to open two units? Uh, two units, uh, totaling four beds, yeah. Mm -hmm. Four beds. Yeah. I mean, that was part of it. Just, yeah, it was part of it. Yeah. The total cost was <clears throat> considerably more than that. Yeah. I think the, co the conversation that I remember us having in 2016 centered around what is the appropriate cost for a unit of affordable housing? And I think we did a little bit of research back into all the affordable projects that we've done and since the beginning of time. And this one's a little bit of a special case because it has by design more cycle through than a typical or a typical project where want no cycle through. We won't yeah. pull this dead in, in place. Um, so I don't know what the right answer is, but I just but Certainly. also more service, right? Because dial yeah. self is, you know, right. there's other things. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's supportive services that comes along with it as well. Yeah. Right. And, and that, that, that's a question that, you know, 10 years ago, uh, Mass DHCD was asking as well um, when we did our first project right. with them. Or, and we were looking at, you know, we were looking at, you know the average cost for affordable units for adults. For, and then we were looking at, okay, well, what about special populations? And, you know, looking at the youth as special populations and the extra requirements for that because we're not again, you're not looking at somebody who's going to be there you know for you know 15 years and in terms of turnover it's you know youth who you know and some of our other programs are there for you know on average maybe a year and a half before they're they're moving on to the next thing they stabilize they built up supports they built up funds and they're now in a a, 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 a community-based um, housing you know somewhere else in terms of permanent housing so um it's a, it's a, it's a different a much different you know, subpopulation. Yeah, it's not it's unique. Calculate. Yeah, it's, it is. It's very challenging to calculate. Yeah. Um, last, just know that I just put out there just this eight percent escalation, which is high for escalation. <laughs> so typically, we use four uh, in normal times. I've also been hearing a lot of things since the casino construction is ending that there's not going to be a lot of escalations here. I don't know if you've been hearing, uh, hearing a little bit of differences from we've been hearing different things about the amount of labor that's going to be out there. So I don't well, know there's going to be a lot out there. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. So I would think that a non prevailing wage job, 8% seems really high for one year. Mm -hmm. But I don't that, know what else is in that number. Yeah, and that, that's based on you know, feedback from uh, Kiter Builders, JWA, and a couple different, um, I think at least one study um, that I uh, pulled off offline around Massachusetts and, and federal um, trends and um, Sure. Construction. Right. I mean, so. mm. it's yeah. Well, the, the <coughs> question that we have to decide tonight is whether we <coughs> want to grant an expedited review, which would happen at yet another meeting. So I'd appreciate some discussion what are people thinking about the expedited review. We have the criteria in front of us. Is, is there
there? Is there an amount we could approve um, that would keep them going and then get uh, them in for the net regular cycle for additional? Like if we went to $150,000, that might keep their project operational and bids functioning, and then they would be back in the fall to ask for the additional $86,000. Really, a question. Yeah, I, I don't know what, you what would, would be necessary to keep the ball rolling. I, I think that's very possible, especially once we get the, the full numbers on a, on, a, on a stage construction process. Um, I'm just reluctant mm -hmm. to spend all our money before we have. Pro uh, I can certainly respect that. Yeah, requests coming in for proposals. I think that would be definitely something we could look at numbers and look at timelines to, to consider in terms of trying to find a way to, to split that process up. Yeah. I presume we could pay at, out of the next couple rounds or something. But I don't think well, that's not what I heard. No. That's what, not I heard. Yeah. what I heard was buy them a little time so that we can, A, find out what else is going to be competing against. Yeah. If we've got, you know, $630,000 plus maybe a little more from the Fed, from the state, I mean, uh, and we don't know what other projects we're going to be asked to contribute to, I don't want to spend a third of that. Right. On, right on something now although from, from their standpoint that's risky right because now what we're saying is here's here's what we'll really look at giving you and the rest of it well if there are a lot of other projects you're probably out it is risky on our part and like i said that's why we have to really look yeah. at things yeah. yeah i know it is it is because we don't we have no clue what's going to come in yeah that's, and it kind of amps up that i'm sorry go ahead no. i mean but that's why the you know the beginning of the policy says that, general public benefit is best served when we conduct our review in our regular schedule because then we know it all and we can figure out what's what serves the public best this serves the public but we don't know what else right. what else are being asked to serve yeah when you go to the estimate please as much as you can break things out i think that's important uh, so. I, I, more i'm just uh, looking at the um policy mm -hmm. um, you know, there are five questions that are asked from the seniors and I think just going by the book um, I think you've answered these um, and so mm -hmm. I would say that I think that given this policy uh, we owe it to you to yeah. consider an application um, but that I think what Julia said is correct too that I feel very strongly about that. Um, and also given the restriction on the amount of money that we're going to have in the next year, um, you know, it take, it's a large chunk of it. You realize that. I so. yeah. yeah, I agree. Mean, that's why I asked that question because I was looking at the five criteria and I thought, criteria met. And that, you know, if they're met and we agree, we review the application. And, and, there, and, we, and while we review that application, we have to consider all the possibilities of the future and all the risks. And that, that's, that puts us in a real bond. Yes, I think it's really tricky. The more you give us, the better. The more possibilities, the better. Sure. Jeff, did you have some thoughts? Oh, I think it meets the criteria. I think we I think we owe an expedited review, but I would echo everything what everybody else said. We really don't know. It's, I mean, for myself, as far as what we may see come across our our uh, committee in the fall, I can guess um, what a few things might be, um, whether they show up or not. But in the past, uh, in the recent past, we have um, partially funded other housing projects for affordable housing and I would I would be willing to surmise that that some of those projects may very well come back for another round and then there are other things that are not housing related that are, that are worthwhile and I would I would imagine that some of those will recycle into their their latest version and I do want to I do want to have all that in front of me you know I'm doing that um, we're trying to decide what we're going to do, and we are in a we are in a budget crunch. 
Um, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I mean, I wasn't here for 2016-17, um, but I'm kind of um, surprised that you got the amount that you did at that time, but I think even, perhaps even that short period of time, um, things have got a lot tighter uh, financially with um, the amount of funds allocated, other cities coming online for developing CPCs. It's, a, it's tight out there right now. But I, I this, this certainly does meet the criteria for an expedited review. Any other thoughts? Okay. Um, okay. Um, meeting the criteria for expedited review doesn't mean we have to give them the money. No, actually not. Um, and uh, I am. So I'm, I'm going to hold that. I'm going to hold that in mind. Um, like a lot of people, I'm 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 uncomfortable. I, this is not. I'm going to say this. This is not based on the merits of, of your program, which I supported at full funding when it came up. Um, at this point, I think we were planning about a million dollars. Um, this is about this is about this process. So please, please, please forgive me for what I'm about to do. I don't like it. Um, I, it puts it puts me again in a position that that I was in about six months ago, where I'm spending a lot of money up front. And we, you know, I, I'm glad we were able to do all the things we were able to do in the two rounds last time. Um, I think we got a little bit lucky um, in the second round with resources that we didn't expect to have and, and being able to parse them out in a way that, that worked out for everybody. Um, and, and the idea of spending a third of the money without seeing any of the other projects makes me really leery. Um, so I'm, 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 when we talk about this particular project, I, I encourage you to hear what Julie was saying. Just give us give us a good reason to do it. Um, but just on the principle of the thing, um, I wasn't here when this was written. Um, I understand what the need for it is, um, but I I I because you want to have in any any budgeting document a trap door for things that require expediency. Um, the fact that a project meets a certain criteria does not, as I said my mind guaranteed that it's, that it's meritorious um, uh, particularly in the, in the financial times that we find ourselves so uh, I'm not saying this as well as I want to but but I, I don't know what I don't know what the writers of this had in mind with regard to what their what their threshold for funding programs through an expedited process was I wish I had been because I don't know if this is something where it's meant to be um, handling normal projects in an extraordinary manner or handling extraordinary projects in an extraordinary manner. Um, and uh, I guess that's the best formulation I have for this. I, I just, I, I'm just not sure what this, is, what this document is telling. And again, I apologize because I really, I, I like, I like what you guys are doing, and I, and I support it to 275, um, and my wife helped me buy the property. So, um, and I, and I, I take no offense from yeah. any of those statements. I completely understand so, where you're coming from on all of that. Absolutely. So, anyhow, yeah, that's what I'm here. Uh, um, I'm totally in favor with the aspect of the review, and obviously we have a lot of questions. I would say that the process thing is also more general in the sense that you know, CPC has a lot more leeway to, to spend taxpayer dollars than, uh, as far as I can tell, any other governmental body. Uh, you know, there's no bid, you know, the department for bids and all these things. Um, that said, especially with, with, with projects connected to an issue to which there's some controversy in town these days, you know, we owe it to the future of CPC to be very careful with the dollars and not just do things that could raise, you know, we don't, lots of people wanted a referendum to, you know, Withdraw CPC and nothing else. And um, 
I think it says a really bad president, leaving aside the program which I support. So it says a really bad president that we gave a substantial amount of money to a project that went off and did something pretty different with the money than what we approved. Not totally not different, obviously, but you know, somewhat different in substance. And now it comes back sort of saying, well, now you need to double it or, or it's all a waste. And it's really a bad, you know, if other organizations were to do something like that because they see that it's a way to get us to approve the money, it's not a very good precedent to set. So I would say, don't just give us a good reason to approve us, like give us some options, yeah. partial approval. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's coming across loud and clear. Okay. So I will, uh, I, will, I had a sincere and initial application, but I will be uh, getting some additional, I, I will be, um, some dead ex expanding on that, getting some dead okay. uh, addendums on that. Can we talk about the schedule first, or we'll do that afterwards? I, I think we probably have a motion to do the expedited and okay. right. move for expedited review. Right. Second. 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 Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? So um, you've heard, I think, what, that we that we want more than probably the application that you have. Uh, Worked hard to prepare. How much time do you realistically think you need to present us with the information, additional information? I would think a week or two tops. Hmm. We have the we have the month of June. So we can't we can't get approved before the end of June anyway. But, and there has my initial application. I think if you could have that and it, you know to start with, then I could bring the additional um, information to bear after the fact um, within the next two weeks. I want to look at their schedules and Sarah, I don't know if you have any constraints on your time, because if you're not here, we're we're <laughs> <sorry. laughs> <laughs> 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 we can meet, but we really can't <laughs> <laughs> We should also look at the construction schedule for the front door. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that would possibly be in June thirteenth. No. No. That doesn't work. No, I'm, I'm moving. Oh, yeah. Um, are you serious that you could? I, I don't want to force it to be too soon and then not have the information. One week would be, will be probably tight on the tighter side. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd rather get good information. Okay. But I think David's point is well taken. We're not, we're not going anywhere until July. So. so I mean, this is the thing. We're running into June, so we have to come to the Does it have to be Wednesdays? Is that it? Does that in the Constitution? No. On the website, though. Finish the Well, no, we're literally moving that day, so the 13th is just not. Yeah. We'll come over for the pizza. You do the 14th? 14th. Thursday night. Yeah, probably, probably be too much trouble for me and all the time you did that. Okay. okay. <laughs> when do you think you could be, Chris? <laughs> the, following, the following week, I think, is something realistically disappointing. Uh, how's the 19th, Tuesday the 19th? I've gone the whole week. Is that not but I'm okay with you. I can't do that. 21st. No, I know you can't. It's a really bad week. All right, now we're into the week of the 25th. How's the 26th of June? Is that Tuesday night? Tuesday Eight. night. I will not be here that way. 27th. And I'm in Canada. <laughs> uh, let's, let's go back to... We don't even know how, about how about the 25th? that won't be here on the 25th? Uh, I can do the 25th. Are you out for the entire week, Jack? Yeah, I'm, I'm gone to the West Coast on the 19th, I believe. So, so there's your expedited review. <laughs> <laughs> How about you on the 11th? I don't know the name, but I can. It's a Monday before you leave. Did you try that? Or your name? Yeah, I can do that. I mean, I think I, it's, 
we don't know Brian's schedule, right? And being down two is is really tricky. Like if one person's not, well, this is a substantial amount of money. We can try for two and eleven. We can try for one, and if Brian can't make it, then we'll reschedule. By when do you need the commitment in hand? Not necessarily the funding, but so you got the money. Where are we getting? Best, um, July, I mean, we, we could go into July 15th and just it would push everything back, you know, several weeks. But I, you know, again, I would, so we could go into July potentially. Yeah. You, you, if you went into July with the committee, you would not have the yeah. city council. City council. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I would, I would, I would, so in that case, committee in June would be preferable. <laughs> uh, June 11th works for everybody perhaps Chris. Well if we help them move then they'll come on. <laughs> <laughs> I think that fire lights open meeting on Oh you can be there, you just can't talk to me. <laughs> and would the eleventh would work for you? Yes, I, I will I will make any day work for me in June at this point. So why don't we say right tentatively there. it's June 11th. Sarah will confirm with the chair whether we can be here. Is that a Monday? That's a Monday. It's Monday. And get back to us. Anything further that anyone have? Uh, regarding the application, I, so I have uh, some of the like an initial application that doesn't include some of the other things that the committee has asked for, would you like that immediately? And then I can send you the supplemental info whenever it comes in. I, I don't see any reason to wait on that. I mean, if we want to wait until the end of the month. Sounds like there's some pieces of it like you have already, you just haven't sent to Sarah yet? Um, no, so, so Sarah has 36 pages of application material already um, with, that have a bunch of information. The only thing it doesn't have is um, some additional information on, on the phasing, and um, um, I'm thinking I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more too. I think I don't think I talked as much about the, like the you know the, what the bid process we did go through because we did go through a bid process for construction. And so I don't think I mentioned the, how many bidders we went through or what those initial bids were so before we bid. So sorry, it was an open bid. It was not. It was an invite. On, it was an invite bid. So not we, open, but you saw the bids. Not the CM didn't just correct. Yeah, we saw we dial self saw the bids. Okay. We we opened them with the architect. So right. yeah. And we, we received three bids for the project, so. June and uh, potentially now, I mean, uh, in May and again in June, and uh, we'll try to get like get some, get some good answers for you. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, so this is, in, well, I, mean, I don't mean to be the one to say, but um, so this is in follow up to the um, application from the historical commission for uh, the preservation plan. Um, so after that. Uh, Mark and I had some discussions offline. We were told two people can talk about something. It's okay. <laughs> and um, I, I don't know exactly. So, so I don't know, Martha, you're probably, you went back to the historical commission and talked to them about um, the application, right? And why don't you? Yes, I did talk to them about the application. Um, and um, it, just to make a really long story short, I. Um, formally got an endorsement for them to go ahead and to do some more um, investigation about how we could better the application, because uh, that was what the committee requested. Um, uh, so um, we, we, and I say myself and a couple of the members of the commission, 
um, sort of have begun having some discussions with other people in the community that are have interest in this, this subject. Um, and I think, so one of the things that um, I think came up in all of this was just the whole <laughs> open meeting law and whether, you know, David and I had a great sort of initial conversation about this, but then moving forward, it seemed like it was going to be a conflict of interest and open meeting law would be a problem. But I think we resolved that, right, Sarah, that we would um, just post, the historical commission would post yeah. about it. Um, so I, I think that, and to, uh, to just summarize, I think that there have been some really great ideas that have emerged um, from a number of different people. Um, People from historic Northampton, um, Smith, um, and David had a lot of great ideas. And I think the idea is to try to have a few more of those um, with some other interested individuals, and then um, hopefully that will reformulate the application. And we'll go back to the Historical Commission for their review of it, so they're more on board with it. But they're overall really, I think, are interested in moving ahead and um, making a stronger application. So, do you want to add anything? I don't think so, no, I mean, I, I, I was relieved that the open meeting law forbade me from going to more meetings. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm joking, I, I, it's very exciting, so I'm glad that there's been more or less more. And then there was some discussion about um, doing the plan in concert with the overall um, yes. Northampton plan. I don't the know if there's anything more to say about that, but... I mean, I think, sir, you can weigh on this, but I think the timing is critical in the sense that if we do um, make it part of sustainable Northampton, the plan will be need, will need to be funded in the next round of CDC. Okay. So. The idea, I think, is that it can piggyback That's on some of the public forums that are going to be happening anyway yeah. to really get much mm -hmm. more yeah. public yeah. Uh, interest yeah. in the process, which I thought was sounded like a great idea. Yeah, it's also part of our conversation, so so much better when it comes back with this moment. Yeah. yeah, and it, I also heard you say you done some of what that plan said, which was, oh, we'll work with other groups. You're working with the other groups. Great. Yeah, there's a lot of interest, and good. I think there's um, yeah a lot of enthusiasm. So okay. uh, uh, yes, Chris. Hi. Um, so uh, <laughs> I think one of the things that came up in my mind during the discussions we were having about this was if you were going to uh, start to pull together a group of people to talk about the use um, or designation of historic structures in Northampton, um, how one would attract people to that discussion who don't normally play in that mm -hmm. that that game? Yep. Um, and uh, have you guys put any thought into how you might go out and recruit people? I think it's great to have people who want to be on it. I think it would also be great to have people who haven't thought about being on it. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that's really critical to the success of the planning process mm -hmm. is to do a really creative um, and far-reaching public engagement. And that requires the expertise of a professional or group of professionals who can do that, who have you know, experience reaching hard to uh, people who don't normally participate. Um, I think one of the things that there are a lot of things that have come out of this, but one of the things I think that was sort of most salient for me is that um, there's an opportunity in the city to um, really develop kind of a thematic approach to this in the sense that we need to decide really what's important about history in Northampton and that could be looked at thematically. So for example, um, we recently had to review an application, I think I mentioned this in my presentation, um, for the demolition of the original site of the Lathrop home, which is on South Street. Um, and um, it was a really hard discussion in the historical commission. And I think that if there had been a planning work done ahead that identified as a theme in the city our historical commitment to social service and caring for the needy, caring for the less disadvantaged, I think our decision about that would have been a lot clearer. And I think there are other really um, important overarching things like that, um, you know, civil rights, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the water, um, the, art, the arts community. Um, so it's those are the kinds of things. Yeah, that's a, those are very interesting frames to put on it to pull it together. Yeah. Well, and I also like it in the context of, of frame. You know, how do we how do we talk about 
the role of historic preservation in the context of sustainable Montana? Because the, right. the natural conflict I see is, you know, there will be forces on the historic side that will say, don't touch anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there will be people who are going, look, if you're going to be smart about, about growth in Northampton, you can't put a freeze on demolition. It's not going to work. Right. Um, so having those two sort of groups <coughs> playing together, I think, would be really useful. Yeah, and David, we had a long conversation about this because I think that there needs to be an opportunity to sort of renew. Yeah. Um, you know, the city is renewed a lot. There's this thing in St. Mary's, which is now in question, as you all know, to read the newspaper. Um, you know, that was a the site of this lovely hotel for many, many years historically that was on the canal, right? Or the, I guess, yeah. So, um, you know, that got removed, and then a big Catholic cathedral was built. And so there is a um, there's a history of renewal and rebirth here, and I think that needs to be considered in the whole process too. And then accommodating um, new architectural styles and accommodating the work of local designers. Um, all those things need to be thought through. Is there, is there anything you can say just about the overall structure of sustainable in Northampton or what the timeline is? Or what, what is it exactly? So the, uh, the planning department is beginning work on a uh, municipal vulnerability plan, which is mostly a state grant, but we're using it as a kickoff to sustainable Northampton. And that will create the framework for the new sustainable Northampton. So the city doesn't know what exactly what it will look like at this point. But it's not a new comprehensive plan. It is. It's an update, it's right? Yeah. It's, well, it's, no, it's, it's an update. It's an update. I, and we, we'll make recommendations that will affect zoning, but it won't contain any zoning. And I can't remember who I heard say this, but is there some possibility that, because the RFP for the consultants who's going to do that has not been written yet? It hasn't. That there's some possibility that you could piggyback and get a consultant to a sub-consultant that yes. have historical uh, yeah, preservation be the skills. Idea. Don't in any way merit. Don't don't weigh the merit of the expedite yeah. review. It's just should you do the expedite review or not? Right. Right. And right. the problem with those five questions is that pretty much anybody can jump on expedite review based on those five questions. Mm -hmm. You know, we need the money tomorrow. Right. Expedited review. Yeah. And there are many reasons for people to need that money tomorrow. And I wonder if there's a way for us to come back and look at the expedited review process because it it, it maybe it does need to be a little more than just. Do you need the money really soon? Yeah. Or well, what I was struggling with is I was reading into it another criteria or imposing, superimposing another, yeah. which is there's really good reason for being in the position they're in. And I don't so think they questions. manage the process right. Yeah. That yeah. seemed really clear. And then also just in you know hearing them out and extracting information, it does seem like the project will go through. It may just be done in phases and more expensive, but I think it's going to happen anyway. So does that really make an, an emergency? It's not like the building is going to fall down. or. You That's know, why I wish I'd been here when, when the language was drafted, so I had a better understanding of what it was that they were trying to achieve. Yeah. I mean, that won't affect the committee's weighing of the project's merits, though. And now you'll have an application that will be considered the same way that the rest of them are, except that it's asking for a third of your money. Yeah. 
before you've seen any other application. No, and I don't think that's ever happened before. Right, no. but every subsequent project now that comes up for expedited review is always going to be asking us for approximately a third, maybe half of the money that we're going to have because we're going to have less and less money or possibly the, approximately the same amount of money. So is there an opportunity for us to come back and take a look at these determination criteria? Because I'm looking back at those five questions and the five questions never never ask about, you know, why wasn't, why can't this happen in the regular cycle? Why did it happen prior or why couldn't it happen yeah. subsequent? So what would the they, impact be? If they would have had a much better chance of getting the money if they were in the last round. They, they would have. have yeah. True. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. for instance, expedited review, maybe there's no money coming in. Would we bond something on an expedited review? Well, we always have some I mean, if, you know, it really begs millions of questions about our own process. Yeah, and, and it all starts with, we love the regular meetings because we're best served that way. The Bean Allard acquisition was bonded and expedited, but that was a pretty, that was a pretty extraordinary case. That's, that was a very different type of review. It, 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 there's always a tension between wanting to give yourself latitude and, and yeah. not opening yeah. that door to wide open. I'd, I'd be in favor of looking at the language again to see if there's, I mean, you don't want to tie your hands, but you do want to make it uh, their burden of, uh, fairly high before they, they ask for this. And those five points aren't supposed to be repeated twice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't like that. That, yeah. was, a, that was an error in the documents. And I don't know. Actually, you know, there is questions. one spot that says something about merit does say a situation may arise in which a project that would normally be of very high priority. No one else yeah. thinks of very high priority if you first read the application. Yeah, well, they can give us some other. Yeah, I guess. Very high priority. I think uh, to me the higher bar for approval is really more about their mismanagement of the project since 2016. Yeah. And, uh, right. And then yeah, the public I process. These are yeah. public dollars, so I just yeah. don't I don't really appreciate the separating. Again, I feel like you always say separating my support for like the good work they do, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, just the sort of irresponsibility of the public dollars, which no other you know, city council would never throw money around like that. I hope. Um, so. well, I think we can take all that into consideration when we will review the right. yeah. application. Did we have a motion to adjourn yet? <laughs> motion. Second. Second.